that He is God and He changes not. So if you feel today that you're not as close to God as you used to be, guess who moved? It wasn't God. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard a story or read it one about an older man and an older woman and going down the road and the man's driving. He always did the driving. But his wife said, Hun, I just feel like she's sitting over here next to the door. He's sitting over there. He says, Hun, I feel like we're not close anymore. I used to sit right next to you and we'd hold hands while you drove down the road and looked over and said, Well, hun, I haven't moved. God hadn't moved. So if we feel like today that we're not as close to Him as we used to be, can't blame it on God. Amen. Sunday morning we talked about in the book of Isaiah where God promised His servants that no weapon that was formed against them would prosper. And I talked for a few minutes about the depression that has so many people gripped today. And I hope I didn't make anybody feel bad because they've been felt that way before because I tried to say that all of us at some time or another feel that way. We shouldn't. Just because we feel that way don't mean we should. It doesn't mean you're lost. It doesn't mean that you're not saved because we get discouraged. Even David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. And different men of God... Elijah went up and hid in the cave. He got discouraged. Jonah, after his great deliverance from the belly of the whale, and he went and preached to Nineveh. He goes out on the hillside and he's complaining. He's discouraged. So man gets discouraged. Doesn't make it right. Because if we really trust in His Word wholeheartedly, and if we can get our eyes on that and off of everything else, that would help us. As Mark, the, the Bible says that if we'll keep our mind on Him, that He will keep us in peace, in perfect peace. So the Word of God tells us that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, that's you. And their righteousness is of me. Where does your righteousness come from? Your righteousness comes from Him. If you think today that the length of your hair and the length of your sleeves and the length of your skirt... And the fact that you tithe and the fact that you're faithful to church, if you think all of that makes you holy, you're in for a rude awakening. None of that has the ability to make you holy. Brother Hinton used to say, I don't live right to save me. I live right because I'm saved. We are saved unto good works. So our righteousness comes from the Lord. That's the only way you'll ever be holy. You'll ne are you saved in here tonight? Let me see your hand if you're saved. You'll never be more saved than you are right now. You'll never be more holy or justified than you are right now. Because your justification and your holiness and your salvation does not come from you or the flesh. It comes from the blood of Jesus that has washed you and cleansed you. Will you grow some more? I hope so. I hope I do. I still got a lot of growing to do. So yes, there is a growing up. There is a journey. There is a race that is set before us to run. But you will never be more saved than you are right now if you're saved, born again, and know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's as saved as you're going to get. <coughs> no such thing as being more saved. I'm more saved than you are. No, you ain't. We're washed in the blood of Jesus. We're both saved. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And God wants us to realize as we walk around and we do get discouraged at times and there are times that the enemy battles our mind and that's where the real battlefield is at in these last days. He battles our mind and He causes us to think nobody cares. Don't tell how many people I hear that from. They don't feel like anybody cares. And where does that feeling come from? It doesn't come from God because He has promised us over and over again in His Word that He cares. We feel like there's no hope. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from God because He has promised us that there is hope. We feel like that there is no peace to be found. And that doesn't come from God because He tells us in John the 14th chapter, turn over there with me. I'm not going to talk but a minute or two. John the 14th chapter and the 27th verse. John 14 and 27. 
These are the words of Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Now listen to what he said. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus said, I'm going to give you peace, my peace. Not the kind of peace that the world gives you. The world has some peace to give. There is some peace of mind to be found in having <coughs> money in the bank. But that peace of mind leaves when your bank account hits red. And there's no more money to be found. There is some peace to be found in good health. But that peace is reliant upon the fact that you stay in good health. Peace that comes from money is reliant upon the fact that you still have money. What happens when you find yourself without any money? If that's where your peace came from, you won't have any peace. What happens when you find yourself without any health? Without any good health? If your peace was in that, then you'll find then you'll find your peace has left. But Jesus said, I want to give to you peace, not like the world has. See, the world's peace depends upon things. It depends upon people. It depends upon stuff. It depends upon materialism and different things. Things you can feel. <clears throat> if your peace is... Tonight, if you find your peace in the fact that you can feel the Spirit and the goosebumps, where's your peace going to go when you can't feel that? And you will get to the place where you cannot feel that. Sooner or later, all of us get to the place we walk through a valley or we walk through a time in our life where we don't feel God. So if your peace is wrapped up in your feeling, when the feeling's gone, your peace is gone. If your peace is wrapped up in materialism, when the materialism is gone, your peace is gone. But Jesus is saying, I want to give you peace. Peace that the Bible teaches us passes all understanding. Peace that the world cannot give you. Where does this kind of peace come from? This kind of peace is not based upon materialism, which will change. It's not based upon your health, which will change. It's not based upon your feelings that will change. You know what it's based upon? Something that will never change. That will never fade away. <coughs> this is where true peace comes from. Your faith in this. You put your faith in money and obtain a little peace. But sooner or later the money be gone. You put your faith in friends and have a little bit of peace. But sooner or later your friends be gone. But if you put your faith in this, Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall remain. My word shall not pass away. Brother Tyler, if you can get a hold of this, you can have this. That's why the Bible says it passes all understanding. Will you still feel troubled? Will you still feel... What did he say? He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We become gripped with fear when we lose sight of God's Word and His promise and His power and God and we get our eyes off of Him and all of the problems and the things. We're more like the children of Israel there whenever they were facing the light than we are David. Because most of the time we can't see the size of our God for the size of our problem. If we could just realize how big God is, how powerful God is, then we would realize how really small our problems are compared to that. Does it mean you does, does this peace that Jesus gave, did it mean you would never go through anything? No, it, didn't, it meant the opposite. It meant that when you did go through things, you could have peace of mind. You could have peace. Why? Because when things seem like they're going to destroy you, His Word says, all things work together for good to them that love God or to the called according to His purpose. When you walk through the valley of death, you can have peace because David wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. When you feel like you're alone, you feel like nobody cares, Brother Isaac, you can have peace because you know that he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He even said when mom and daddy walked out, the Lord would take you up. Amen? He said he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If we can get a hold of some of these things, if we can get a hold of the promises of the Word of God, the reality of the foreverness, that's not correct grammar, but I'll use it anyway, the eternity of God's promises, 
Then we would realize that no matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, God is still on the throne. That He still loves me. Regardless of what the world does to me. Regardless of what the church does to me. That's the kind of peace that Jesus was saying that He would give to those that would put their trust and their faith in Him. The Bible, over and over again, tells us to trust in His Word. If we'll trust in His Word, I'm telling you today that every answer to every problem that you need can be found in this book. Putting our faith in God's Word, that's what brings peace that passes all understanding. This Word is a revelation from Genesis to Revelation. is a revelation of Jesus Christ. We find in Him and in His promises and in His Word, in His precious blood, we find in Him peace and strength for the journey. We find in Him the ability to, even whenever it looks like everything has fell around us, to say, God, I don't understand it. I don't like it. But I know that you're with me. Because your word says, because I feel it, no. Because your word says that you're with me. You'll never leave me. That's all I've got tonight. Hallelujah. Trust his word. He will see you through. Somebody else.